Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Isex bringing you another Division E matchup of the NGS. This time it's between the Core Bouncers and FF and the Pancakes. These are two top tier teams in the Division E. We are about three fourths of the way through the current season right now. The Core Bouncers are in the number two spot, sitting at five and two record. The FF and the Pancakes are sitting in the number four spot at a four and two record. So FF and the Pancakes have not played as many games as the Core Bouncers. Both teams sitting on two losses right now. It should be a really good matchup between these two teams. Um, I was able to cast the Core Bouncers, who came away with the win last week against Fredonia. This week we are going to see what happens. FF and the Pancakes, I've been able to watch them in the past as well. They're a very good team. They are well known for their uh, wombo combos that they like to bring to the environment and to the games. Uh, they're also a very uh, historic team. They've been around for many seasons now. Uh, so it has been, it's going to be a, a very good game between these two teams. Uh, switching over to the maps real quick. The core bouncers won the coin toss and they elected to, oh, I just got an interview or invite to the lobby. Uh, they just got, they were, won the coin toss, elected to get first pick. And so our maps that were banned, uh, FF and the Pancakes banned Hanamura and uh, the Volskaya Foundry, both maps that core bouncers won last week on against the Fredonia. Uh, core Bouncers elected to ban Braxis Holdout and Cursed Hollow. And uh, FF and the Pancakes ended up picking up Dragonshire as the map. So that's where we're going to go. Game one is Dragonshire. Um, pretty much just waiting. Hold on one second. They wanted to make sure that they could get the link to the stream just so everybody knows they want the link to the stream but the stream is on a 30 second delay so neither team will get any information like advantageous information uh from from the match um so that that's part of ngs rules for the seasons that we have them on a 30 second delay um so yeah i looking back i this is going to be an interesting map choice uh, i think f and the pancakes do I've seen them play this map. They do fairly well on this map. I have not seen Core Bouncers play in Dragonshire uh, as of yet. Um, hold on. And I'm just letting everybody know that I'm ready when they are. Um, the Core Bouncers, as far as picks and bans that we can see, uh, I, I expect a lot of very strong team combinations coming out of FF and the Pancakes um, from the Core Bouncers. They historically like to go with champions like the Sylvanas. Last week, we saw them get Tassadar twice, and the Tassadar did a lot of damage when he was hitting those black holes. Um, so the Tassadar is a very good comfort pick for the core bouncers. Um, they do like that Sylvanas. They do like May uh, in their front line. So we'll see if that factors into any of the picks and bans coming out of the uh, FF and the Pancakes. And... Um, from FF and the Pancake side, I know they like Jaina. I know they like Phoenix. Uh, they've run gank comps like cross the map with Illidan and Tyrael. So they have a lot of different comps that they can run. I think the last time I saw them on this one, they had like an ETC, Gazlo, Orphea, just put them all into a blender and serve them up kind of deal. All right, we're getting into the match real quick to the draft screen. So it'll be interesting to see the strategy that each team takes going into this uh, pick and ban phase. As mentioned, core bouncers on the left will get first pick, so they will have the first ban going into the series. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this map. I expect both teams possibly to throw in an Infernal Shrines uh, down the road uh, as a possibility map. Both teams I know have, have enjoyed playing on the Infernal Shrines. Um, but you know, it, it, we'll see what happens after the result of this first game. Decker Kane banned out by the core bouncers. Kind of just an overall strong champion if he's able to get those potions, kind of set up fights around those two control points on either side of the map. Strong CC if he takes that stay a while and listen at level 10. So not a bad first pick, getting rid of a lot of CC potential, um, which makes him a little more favorable in those smaller skirmishes, which we will see some of those smaller skirmishes on this map in addition to the big team fights. 
coming out of FF in the Pancakes, we have the Tassadar ban. Okay, so they did their homework. They saw that the core bouncers do like to be comfortable on that Tassadar. The Tassadar is a very strong pick for them, but unfortunately they are not going to have it this game. Now let's see if they are able to get that Sylvanas pick that they are looking for. Make sure I got my app here open up so I can see chat. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Last week we had a um, little bit of a hiccup with the audio, so I want to make sure that people, when people call that out, I can actually see it. Uh, Mouth Ale banned from the core bouncers. Mouth Ale's pretty strong solo laner up in that top lane. Um, able to deal a lot of damage, not only bullet, be a bully in lane, but also strong against that double tank meta or front line beefiness. So Mouth Ale's going away, and Sylvanas is gone for the core bouncers. So they're not gonna see that Tassadar Sylvanas comfort pick. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with, with uh, game one. Are they gonna pick the May out early? Are they gonna, they do favor Lucio as well as one of their healers. So the, perhaps they might go for that Lucio support that they tend to uh, flex a lot on. He had a very strong game two on Volskaya with Lucio, one, one which he Probably should have died getting entombed by Leoric, but somehow uh, their healer was able to escape and with the Lucio. And actually, I think he ended up did, did die, but he took he made them dive heavy enough that he took pretty much the entire enemy team with him. Li Ming picked up for core bouncers the first pick, very strong uh, assassin, able to get those resets. So we'll see if they'll build more of a burst comp around the Li Ming, or if they're going to let Li Ming be the main poke damage. Kira picked up by Courtney. I've seen Courtney on Kira before. Very dangerous on Kira. Actually, I think I saw her on this map on Kira. Uh, so that will definitely be something that sh uh, the core bouncers are going to have to be aware of. Courtney, can she can definitely put out a lot of damage on that Kira. Anduin picked up um, by the FM the pancakes as well. That light bomb lighting to set up uh, some combos. We can already, Anduin has that ability with his tanks if they get a really good engage. So we'll see what comes out of that. Garrosh Brightwing picked out for Dragon Shard. So they did not go with the Lucy. They went with the Brightwing, giving themselves a little more map presence. Brightwing able to, you know, pick a, f a help the team with a fight on one side of the map and then quickly jump over to the other to help the solo laner out. Uh, able to do that global uh, teleport and able to provide pressure in both lanes and kind of help out fighting over both control points. So good pick uh, up for the Brightwing. Let's see if um, the uh, FF and the Pancakes will be able to pick up something to match the Brightwing pressure, uh, either something with a lot of push power or uh, global themselves. Uh, Tassadar, or sorry, Leoric banned from FF and the Pancakes. They just don't want to deal with the Leoric offlaner. Uh, Kale Toss uh, banned from the Core Bouncers. It'll be interesting. Yeah, these next two picks are going to be... I, I I wonder if they're going to have pick something to answer the Brightwing or if they're just going to go full on with the continuation of their full Wombo combo, which Johanna does fit into that. Junkrat, if he goes... Well, either Riptire or um, the, the Bomb, he could run either Ultimate and... Uh, do a lot of damage onto, you know, Johanna being able to pull everybody together and doing dropping the light bomb onto Johanna and the Junkrat being able to put a lot of damage onto that with Kira as well. So they've got the ability. They've got, I, I would have liked to maybe seen ETC. They did have the Garrosh and the interrupt and Lee Ming with the disrupt. So ETC, it, it may not, Johanna's a safer pick. Um, Rexar being picked up as a solo laner. Rexar is one of his stronger maps. Dragonshire able to use Misha um, to either hold the point or push the lane, dependent upon what kind of ability goes and the amount of pressure that. I, I think it's going to be Courtney, possibly on the Kira in that off lane. Uh, Lunara picked up as well. We saw that they did have the Lunara in the last map. She is one of the more favorite picks of the core bouncers just because of the mobility and the amount of damage. But Kira will not be in the off lane. It will be Zul. That split pushing power, like we talked about, double soak. Zul is very good at that. It's a good response to Brightwing. Um, he does okay against Rexar. Uh, he's able to push, meet the pushing power. It's he's not going to die to Rexar. Shouldn't die uh, solo to Rexar. He should be able to meet that and be able to do that double soak between top and mid. Uh, overall, I like the comps I'm seeing both teams. Uh, the, if FF and the Pancakes can land this Wombo combo with the Zul. 
Johanna and Lightbomb, light bomb, they're going to have a really strong team fight, but the core bouncers have very good, uh, answer able to spread out high mobility with the leaming and the Lunar to kind of stay away from that engage potential. So it'll be interesting to see where, where we come, uh, in this game and what team is just better able to execute their, their fights a little bit more cleanly. Yeah, I'm I'm really liking what I see out of FF and the Pancakes. Uh, you know, I said it last last series, uh, series for Core Bouncers. I I said I didn't like their combo both times, uh, or not as much as the other team. I like their their team comps, just not as much as the other teams. But uh, they were able to execute it much better and came out with a clean 2-0 victory. Um, and they do have great taunt from Garrosh blow up potential with the Lee Ming. So they could snowball a fight if they're able to pull it onto a squishy, uh, quickly. All right. Let's just zoom out, get all my stuff together. So over on the side of the court bouncers, we have Captain John Jay on the Lunara, Captain Garbo on the Brightwing, Nemesis on the Lee Ming. We have Credit Clown on the Garrosh and up top we have Dan Solo 56 on the Rexar. On the side of FF and the Pancakes, we have Jaeger on the Johanna, Stampy on the Zool, Courtney on the Kira, XY, I'm not even going to try XY on Anduin, and Mr. G on Junkrat. Five, four, three, two, I anticipate just a little poking from the Junkrat leaming starting off back and forth over this mid lane. I don't expect a whole lot of fighting coming out of this, but being in Division E, it could, could turn into a full on brawl. It's a poke from Lee Ming. We're just seeing right now a little bit of poke back and forth between the two teams. It is going to be interesting to see if Credit Clown is able to get a good throw. He throws a, uh, Johanna into the back line. Not necessarily the target he's looking for, but she was very far forward. Nemesis getting going to get rooted by the Zool. Meanwhile, Rexar is going to be getting some soak in the top lane, and everybody kind of seems to do a little bit of skirmish. Not too much is happening and go back to their own lanes. The Zool, interestingly enough, is going to go into that... Uh, that four-man comp instead of being the solo laner, which means Kira up top is going to... Kira actually is going to go down. Courtney's going to go down. That was a good kill by Dan Solo, denying some of the experience. Uh, and so Rex are able to get that solo kill. You know, it, it, I do see Kira being, you know, able to handle that lane. However, I would expect the Zool. Now Zool seems to be rotating up into this top lane. So I think Zool is going to take over and maybe Courtney is going to go bound down to that four-man. Uh, Zool being in that four-man is, is an interesting call. Uh, he is able to provide that split push pressure, and oh, Jaeger getting thrown over by the Garrosh, but able to be pulled out by the Anduin. 80 second cooldown by the Anduin used there, so the core bouncers can play around that 80 second cooldown. Looks like they may rotate up and go and try and steal camp. Nope, they're going to go back mid and just start soaking up there. Uh, the Zool is starting to push out that mid lane, showing that pushing power that he has. And up in top, we got Misha just sitting on point, getting control of the point already, which is exactly what they want to do. Li Ming getting a little caught out down this bot lane, but able to just sit back. There's no follow-up with the Jaeger. Over in the side of the FF and the Pancakes, they're able to start this camp, which is important. There's no response on the camp from... And the Johanna, I'm sorry, Johanna ended up going down. She got a little too far forward uh, on that Li Ming. Li Ming was able to... It looks like it may have possibly just been a solo kill. Um... But there's no response from the core bouncers. They do have both control point pressure. Actually, Red went over to Kira. Um, and so up in the top lane, Rexar is going to just be a little bit patient. Core bouncers are going to answer and go ahead and go over and start getting a, a, a camp of their own, the siege camp of FF and the Pancake getting their XP lead. Meanwhile, top lane, there is a little bit of a skirmish going on over Misha. Misha's getting bright winged and may get out. He does. Captain Garble comes in and saves Misha the bear. But there's this nice push with the minions that the FF and the Pancakes are able to provide here. This this is that siege camp advantage that they're having. Johanna's dealing with the other one in the bottom. It's getting some fort pressure, but up top lane, the FF and the Pancakes, Misha getting caught, or Rexar getting caught, excuse me. Misha getting low, Rexar getting low. I don't think Rexar, oh, 19 health. Garrosh a nice little stun. Gets away with 19 health on, on the Rexar. Siege Camp's still up, and they have favorable numbers here, so FM Pancake's getting some serious value. Down bottom lane, Lee Ming has just been poking away on this Siege Camp. The fort did get some about half health from that, that uh, Siege Camp that was taken up. But, uh, you know, not able to get that wall down. It's going to just be a little bit of time before they can really 
you know, finish off that siege potential unless they were able to win over this first dragon. Garrosh kind of taking over that top lane. Courtney fighting back over it. Blue does have the control of the Dragon Shard, but it is already gone. Down bottom, Li Ming getting caught out. Li Ming's going to go down. She's gotten rooted. Brightwing getting rooted as well. Junkrat putting out the damage. Ooh, one more hit, but no, Brightwing gets away just with her life, barely getting away with low HP. That's twice where it looked like somebody was just going to die, but Core Bouncers are able to get away just by the skin of their teeth. Carter Clown coming down. Johanna getting caught out here. Johanna, or Zool, I apologize, and Zool's going to go down. Another advantage, Junkrat getting thrown in. Junkrat should be able to save himself, no problem. Uh, over in the top lane, though, looks like Kira and this Rexar are going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but Kira is out of mana, so she should not be able to contest this. This is going to give control of the Dragon Shrine again to the core bouncers. Let's see if they can actually take control of the uh, Dragon, or if they're going to Brightwing start in the channel. Johanna is one of the better champions, able to keep them off. Just because of that iron skin, she's able to, and the FF and Pancakes are able to cancel off the Dragon Shire control, taking over that bot one. Johanna getting thrown in. Credit Clown being able to get that toss, but it's going to be close to see if we can get this damage, and she does end up going down. So that toss giving a little bit of value, going back to that 4v5 situation. Core Bouncer should be able to either get some camps out of this while taking control of the Dragon Shine. I want to see them start to getting a little more pressure on the map. It seems like every time they get a kill, they're able to do a little bit with it, but just not quite enough to be able to turn the, the map into their favor. But it looks like this is what we're, we're able to see. Li Ming's going to get this no problem. They're going to get control of the Dragon Shire. So good job on the core bouncers, making sure that they were able to get some sort of map value off of that 4v5 situation, off that pick. And now we'll see it rotate down into this bottom fort where if they can get this wall down, this fort is already low. Fun thing about Dragonshire is, you know, you, you kind of want to be able to get the forts, like, at least top and bottom. The, usually mid's the focus with a lot of objectives, but in Dragonshire, since the fight is top and bottom, getting this bottom fountain is, is one of the more important and valuable things that the core bouncers could get here. It delays any fighting, uh, any healing over the fighting that goes on bottom. Uh, Dragon Shire is the Dragon is just going to be able to push up, get a little more damage. Credit Clown's going to get away, no problem. I'd expect to see the Dragon just go mid, see what remaining damage he could get mid. Courtney's up in this top lane, just clearing out the minions, trying to get her team back in the game with XP. They are down almost a level and a half. So she's getting that soak, which is pretty much all she can do for her team right now. Li Ming and that Dragon just getting this front wall and hopefully the minion wave. So they should get pretty much everything that was expected for them to get. Uh, they weren't able to get the, the second fort, but realistically with the first dragon, I don't think that was within their sights. They just wanted to make sure they got that bottom health, bottom finish off the bottom fort, get a little bit of pressure in that bot lane with the siege minion, and then uh, get, get as much as they could mid, you know, a little bit of consolation prize. If they could have gotten that health fountain, it would have been a little bit better. Lunara going in on the Johanna down on the bot lane, getting her down about health, but Jaeger should just be able to walk away with the iron skin. Meanwhile... The core bouncers are able to continue to get the siege camp, adding a little more pressure to bot lane, and more importantly, denying XP over to FF and the Pancakes. FF and the Pancakes are just responding. They just got online with their level 10, so they have their ultimates available as well, and they're getting out this Merc camp, which will help them siege top lane, where they already have the wall down. Courtney has been able to provide a lot of pressure. So we'll see what uh, that, that second Merc camp can do, maybe get them a little more pressure in that top lane. Kirash is going to go over and just get started up on that Merc camp, uh, the Siege Merc camp, to respond to that top lane pressure and continue to get that team the XP that they need. You know, Core Bouncers are trying to get to their 13 as quick as they can, which would be an ideal situation for them, being a talent tier up for this next uh, objective fight. And camp is easily picked up over there by the sides of the Core Bouncers. Courtney able to... Push a little bit with this top lane. Looks like F and the Pancakes are going to rotate up and be able to push again on this top lane. Misha's getting caught out, but Misha... Oh, Misha does end up going down. Rexar does not have his bear friend for a little while longer. The side of F and the Pancakes do have a lot of wave clear with that Zola, like I said. So they're able to clear out that Merc camp, no problem. Meanwhile, bot lane... Lunara was able to grab the bot lane Merc camp. So they will have a lot of strong pushing power. I'm going to switch away real quick because Johanna is getting caught out. She does pop the Unstoppable with the Iron Skin up. Uh, able to get away, but there is a very big siege pressure bot lane that Captain John Jay, if he stays on Lunar and just pokes out this Johanna, should be able to provide that pressure. 
uh, may even end up getting the kill here. There is no iron skin for Janna. She ended up having to throw out the Blessed Shield to get away. That Siege Camp is going to stay, and it's going to continue to break down that wall. Uh, core Bouncers are able to, with their level 13s, get control of both of the Shrines and have access to the Dragon in the middle. Junkrat getting caught out a little bit on a rotation. It's a 3v3 right now. Bottom Brightwing is down in this fight, so he can't rotate in. Riptar going out by Junkrat, doing a little bit of damage, but not able to provide the burst needed. Captain Garbo, or Credit Clown, able to throw. Stampy, the Light Bomb goes off, but misses. Zul's ult goes off. Johanna able to get, or Lunar able to get some damage. Lunar is rooted. Lunar, it's pretty much a big fight down here. Lunar is getting away barely again. Core Bouncers are getting away. This is Reset City for Leeming if she can get a kill, but she's overextended just a little bit. Li Ming gets one kill, able to get the first one with the mana, able to get the second. If she gets the reset, she may be able to get over and get the Anduin, but she's not. Meanwhile, Core Bouncers were able to pick up the Dragon, able to push into this mid lane, get that health. I anticipate that after they finish this one, they may rotate to that bottom since that bottom's already done with the key pressure, or they just may feel comfortable getting that top fort, but they are, it looks like, going to go for this bottom with that wall already down and the two deaths. They could get some serious keep pressure on here, possibly even getting the keep. Depends on how the focus of FF and the Pancakes here. I anticipate them being able to get the keep here with the dragon. With the dragon. Um, the dragon will get fairly unhealthy. They do engage past the dragon, but they are able to knock the Johanna away. The dragon does have to go backwards. Meanwhile, Kira jumps in onto the Garrosh. Unstoppable pop by the Garrosh. FF and the Pancakes are trying to pick this fight. This is a good fight for them to pick in a 5v4 situation. The Light Bomb does not hit anybody again. Nice and stoppable by the Garrosh, but they're having to retreat away while FF and the Pancakes continue to push. Nice engage by Misha. Under the Junkrat. Junkrat seems over and out of position, but the focus seems to be on the Johanna instead. A little bit of split, but they're able to get the kill onto the Junkrat. Brightwing comes in. Nice ultimate by Zul, putting out some damage, but again, it's just not quite enough. Everybody on the Core Bouncers is barely staying healthy and it's just not seeming to get that that one kill that the ff and the pancakes need core bouncers are able to get over and start up their camp able to take another camp from the side of ff and the pancakes and continue to snowball and cement that xp lead sitting at about almost two levels now and more importantly that level 16 talent is going to come online on the side of the core bouncers captain john j backing up just a little bit Bit. Credit Con sitting just for a little bit of gank while, or waiting for possibly a little bit of a gank while the rest of the team goes and gets their siege camp as well. All right, while we have a little bit of a lull, it's not over for the side of F and the Pancakes at, at, at all. They were able to keep that keep alive and healthy. So this is being scouted out by the core bouncers. F and the Pancakes need to leave. Stampy getting very low on the Zool. Able to get the reset. Garrosh is sitting in there tanking. He did not go the taunt. He did go the decimate, but nice damage by the Li Ming. Three kills. I didn't see where the Kira came in. She came from the top, but Rexar followed in. Li Ming just getting those resets, able to put down the damage. And now they're able to push out this top fort. This is going to be all three forts by the side of the core bouncers, which will give them massive pressure for the objectives. Uh, that was definitely not the fight. Once they the FF and the Pancake scouted that the core bouncers were there with four, they should have just backed out, given the camp over. It's unfortunate to lose the XP, but it's even more unfortunate to lose the camp and three members of your team and a fort as well. So it, it's it's not, again, like I said, they have all their keeps alive. The keeps are healthy. This bottom keep looks like it, it will end up going down on the side of FF and the Pancakes. Um, but they need to just soak up their 16s. There's no way I think they can control this dragon. They just need to group as five, try to burn down the dragon when it does spawn. Uh, make sure that nobody dies. They're able to get the safe poke down. They'll probably end up losing another keep. Uh, but keeping that third keep alive is pretty much their way to victory. Meanwhile, on the side of the core bouncers, if they can get another good pick here and get that Lee Ming to just put out the damage, burst down a target, they should be able to get this keep and possibly end dependent upon how healthy that dragon is Pop popping away Courtney on the Kira the dragon just comes in starts damaging important to know that Brightwing is in there so they don't have the blink heal their healing potential is a little bit lower on the side of the core mounts Junkrat's rip tire comes in able to get onto three members but Stampy gets thrown in with the Zool gets killed Li Ming able to get the reset putting down the damage onto the Johanna Anduin was not able to pull her out in time it was a good attempt to pull her down but she just just a little late, and that's two kills on the side of the core bouncers. They are relatively unhealthy. Brightwing should be able to heal them up. With Misha tanking this, they may be able to end the game here and send this one over to the side of the core bouncers. It will be interesting. Misha gets a nice little stun onto the Courtney. 
Uh, but Misha, or Rexar himself, is getting very low. Credit Clown does get stunned underneath. Courtney able to put some damage down onto the Garrosh. Minions are spawning. I don't know if they no longer have the potential to end here. Light Bomb going down on the Courtney, but it goes off while she's spinning, so it doesn't stun anyone. Courtney taking some damage here. Lunara putting down the damage, but the respawns are coming in on the side of FF and the Pancakes. They now have their full strength of five defending. This is the last day, and Garrosh getting fairly low. Johanna going in, trying to just tank up. Courtney landing onto Credit Clown on the Garrosh. Garrosh should go down here, no problem with the damage. Garrosh is staying healthy. There, finally, FF and the Pancakes get one of their kills. It's been tough getting those kills, but they were able to burn down the Garrosh and are able to now push out with five. What they should be looking to now is getting as much XP as they can, getting as much map pressure. They are going to have to respond to this mid lane pushing in, but they do have a nice push going top uh, that should be able to keep the pressure. Core Bouncers are able to get their camp uncontested. Uh, so that's good for Core Bouncers. F and the Pancakes are able to get their Siege Camp. F and the Pancakes do need to go down and get this bottom camp as well. They're pretty much looking to just get as much value as they can while they're in this 5v4 situation. Li Ming staying a little too far forward, but there's no... The Johanna does not throw out the Blessed Shield. They don't go with the lockdown onto the Li Ming. They instead just want to get this camp bottom and uh, try and put a fight over to the next objective. But meanwhile, they weren't responding back mid uh, to this push coming mid lane. These are two catapults that are launching onto the core. If the core bouncers can delay here, Zul does end up getting back and you should be able to clear that out no problem since the shield was able to regenerate. Johanna going in, trying to get a little bit of wave clear and then just backing out. The unfortunate side about FF of the Pancakes here, they're just, they're not really able, they are looking to get this pick onto Captain Garbo, and they may, oh, nice blink away onto the Li Ming, able to save his own life, and Lunar goes in, the focus onto the Anduin, Anduin going down, they're able to just jump in as five, Courtney able to get away with the Q, Johanna going in, unstoppable pop, but I don't think she's going to be able to sneak away from this one, they continue to chase, Courtney goes in, just trying to save the rest of her team, nice three-man stun, able to save Junkrat and herself, Unfortunately, Johanna did go down. They got the follow-up. Misha should be able to get a stun, and this should be game one going over to the Core Bouncers. Core Bouncers just showing that they can execute their composition fairly well. The side of FF and the Pancakes, unfortunately, they got behind in that early. They just weren't able to finish off some of those kills early off in the game, and those kills were you know able to go on the side of the core bouncers not necessarily go in on the side of ff and the pancakes and that the snowball was enough that they were able to continue making um kill after kill after kill growing that xp lead up to i think towards the end of the game it was an entire three levels which when you're three levels behind it's really hard you got to look for that that 17 16 19 uh, t versus level 19 on the side of the core bouncer, 16 on the side of F and the Pancakes, and finding a fight over that in order to you know have any chance, especially when you're down two keeps. It just the game continued to get out of control on the side of FF and the Pancakes, and it was really hard to get that comeback going. But look at the damage put out by Li Ming: 150 siege, 55 in the hero damage. Just a, a massive amount of damage that that Li Mang was able to pump out. Junkrat, respectively, got up to 47, um, but he just was not able to compete with the Li Mang. And more importantly, Li Mang was able to provide that burst that they just continued to snowball on top of that, that damage. Let me update real quick that the winner was indeed the core bouncers. And that should show that one nothing victory on the side of the core bouncers. Uh, I'm going to jump back over to the maps. It's it's interesting. Um, I've noticed that the core bouncers, they tend to like that decimate on Garrosh more than the taunt, which is... I, I, I tend to favor the taunt. Um, the taunt just... It provides so much more uh, for the team than that... I think that decimate does, but Garrosh has the sustain with that decimate and is able to crowd control for the rest of his team. So... It's working for them. Uh, again, not a necessarily pick that you see all the time, but in the Division E, it, it's it's doing what it needs to to do. They're able to put out that little extra damage, um, and and as we can see, the execution of the composition is just in favor of the side of the core bouncers. Uh, let me double check with both teams, see if we're able to get into this game two. Okay, it looks like the side of FF and the Pancakes are still deciding what they want 
to do as of this point. But looking at the maps, we do have Towers of Doom available. We do have Infernal Shrines available, both really good um, objective, or Infernal Shrines more of objective, uh, Towers of Doom, more control of that bottom lane, more team fight oriented, which seems to favor the side. Oh, I already got an invite from Captain Garbo, so. And it looks like we're going to side of Alteric Pass. Not entirely sure if that was a pick by Core Bouncers or FF in the Pancakes. So give me one second. Okay, Core Bouncers. Core Bouncers were able to pick the map. And they went with Alteric Pass. Pick that side of the blue. Okay. So. Hold on, my stuff's not updating. There we go. All right, core bouncers were able to pick up Alteric Pass. Um, a, another little bit different of map. It's it's a three lane map, much bigger map. Uh, the globals will be uh, a factor. I'm assuming in this one, it's an objective fighting over the camp in order to get the map pressure. So it's going to be a little more team fight focus, but there is also the potential since it is a much bigger map to have that split push, uh, split push availability for both sides of the team. Let me just let both teams know that I am ready. Seems like I appreciate the speediness that each team is providing here. Being able to get into this next game really rather quickly and getting it good to go. So waiting for both teams. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see how the side of FF and the Pancakes adapt their band strategies, picking band strategies to, oh, we're getting, wow, we're getting into the game already. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how the side of F and the Pancakes adjust their pick and ban strategy uh, against the core bouncers with that Li Ming uh, putting out so much damage. It'll be interesting to see if they ban that Li Ming. Um, the Garrosh as well. The Brightwing on this map being able to provide pressure all across the map and that global that she's able to provide with the teleport could be another factor. Uh, but I would anticipate at least seeing a Li Ming. But if they ban the Li Ming, that means that there's the possibility of either the Tassadar or the Sylvanas going over to the side of the core bouncers, which is a comfort pick for both teams. And both do fairly well on this map. So core, our FF Pancakes have a little bit of a strategy, strategizing that they have to do in order to figure out how they want to approach the bans on this side of the map and they decided to ban out that Garrosh the Garrosh was able to provide some very clean engages he was landing some very good tosses uh, and knockups um, start off doing it with Johanna but towards the end of the game he was able to get an that pick on Anduin at the end of the game which was pretty big for the team fight Deckard being again banned again by the side of the core bouncers um, so Garrosh was was a rather annoying front line to deal with um, and so they just wanted to ban it outright. And they banned the May. I was just about to mention that the core bouncers do have May to revert to, but FM and the Pancakes are saying we're getting rid of Garrosh and May, so you're going to have to pick something completely different uh, than, than what I've seen from them and what I know that they're comfortable with in that front line. May was very strong champion on this map with the amount of fighting over an objective and the amount of crowd control that she could put down on this map, again, with the engage potential, with the slide. Uh, and... Core Bouncers banning out Tassadar themselves. So that seems to me more like they're worried that the side of FF and the Pancakes were going to pick up the Tassadar. Um, interesting, though, because now if they do play the Sylvanas, the Sylvanas pick could go over to the side of FF and the Pancakes, but they do go with the Lucio instead, which is one of the Core Bouncers' more favorite healers. Uh, but this does leave Sylvanas open for the side of the core bouncers. I anticipate it being picked up probably in this first rotation since they do have one more ban phase before the core bouncers will get to pick again. If they wanted the Sylvanas, this is where they would pick it up. Um, she does have that black arrow to be able to provide that silence in addition to just the siege potential with the objective on this map. And the Sylvanas get picked up right away by the side of the core bouncers with Diablo. Good engage potential. Uh, being able to do a lot of zoning um, and just uh, a lot of damage with that APOC. If they can stack some more burst damage on top of that with uh, the, le like the Leeming, again, I anticipate the Leeming possibly getting banned out. 
Diva picked up. So Diva is very, very strong. She did get a little nerf, but she's still a, a fairly strong pick overall uh, for your off laner. And Orphea being picked up by Courtney. Uh, Orphea, very strong champion no matter what. Uh, if you have a player who knows the ins and outs in Orphea and is able to execute it cleanly, uh, Orphea is a very, very scary thing to deal with. Um, she can provide an, just an immense amount of damage and self-sustain for herself on the assassin role. Um, so a good Orphea, especially later in the game, can snowball fights in her team's favor, even fights that look like they're they're lost. Um, Malthale banned again by the core bouncers. They just do not want to deal with that Malthale bully, um, that bruiser lane. Even though D.Va was already picked up on the side of FF and the Pancakes, core bouncers just hate Malthale that much that he's, he's not seeing... He's, he's going to get a respect ban. On the side of FF and the Pancakes, that leaving does go away. Um, so unfortunately, they won't be able to have that burst damage on the side of the core bouncers. But if they're able to get some other form of burst to follow up with the APOC, uh, perhaps in this one, a Chromie, since Chromie is available. Chromie does have an immense amount of damage. And she's very strong in this fight, being able to, if you need to play defensively over your side of the, over your objective, she can poke away safely from uh uh, her base if on the right side and they're going to hold on for that last assassin they're going to take the anduin away from ff and the pancakes uh even though they already have lucio just take it away show that they can play it as well and they're going to pick up the url gaslo picked up so i'm in expecting possibly etc is not ideal with the apoc Zero tool. Okay, there we go. I was expecting something that can lock everybody down, like a team. This is that wombo that they like. Zero tool locking everybody down. Gazlo dropping the grab bomb. Diva putting her mech in the middle. Orphea throwing crushing jaw or eternal feast. I would prefer crushing jaw with this one, but eternal feast could work as well. Just a massive wombo coming out of the side of FF and the pancakes if they can execute it cleanly. Uh, which again. It, it, it's there if the Zeratul gets a very good Void Prism. Uh, he could land that Wombo. They go with the Vala. Vala is not the burst that I was anticipating, but she is very good sustained damage in a team fight and can, if the game gets laid off, put out a lot of damage. Uh, the Vala is going to need a lot of attention um, because of the Zeratul. The Zeratul should have... Uh, no problem really being able to, as long as they pick an open fight, the Diablo can't knock the Zeratul into anything, uh, any wall to stun him. So Zeratul might, that might be a problem for the Vala uh, with the Zeratul on the other team, but we'll see. It's it's going to come down to the positioning on that Vala. Uh, Nemesis has shown that he's able to carry on the Tassadar and the Li Ming. So we'll see if he's able to position well on this Vala as well and able to carry the core bouncers with, more damage, but Captain John Jay on that Sylvanas is going to be a huge pick for them as well. On the side of FF and the Pancakes, I mean, it's coming down to Stampy on that Zera tool. If he can land, if they can get that level 10 fight that he's looking for and have the entire team behind him, getting a two, three man void prism and being able to lay down the Wombo on top of that, I fully anticipate that they will be able to, you know, make this game a lot closer since they were getting more of a team that they're comfortable on. So on the side of the core bouncer, we got Captain John Jay on the Sylvanas. We got Nemesis on the Vala. We credit clown on the Diablo dark solo, Dan solo, sorry, 56 on the URL and Captain Garbo on that. And doing on the side of the pancakes X, I'm just going to say X is sitting there on side of Caslo Jaeger on the diva, Mr. G on the Lucio Stampy on the Zera tool and Courtney sitting on that Orphea. Uh, I expect probably the similar thing, just a little bit of a poke fest. I don't expect any big engages. Diablo might pick one if somebody steps too far forward in that mid lane, but it's probably going to be just Orphea throwing out a little damage. Vala maybe throwing out a Q here or there. Both teams should be comfortable just kind of poking back and forth over this mid lane uh, and then going to their respective side lanes to start soak. Diablo does get a little too far forward, but doesn't able to knock anybody into that wall. And F and the Pancakes just soak it up and decide to go into their lane, side lanes. Core Bouncer's coming down as well, rotating down the bottom. Urel going up top into that solo lane. 
And F and the Pancakes just do a quick push and decide to go straight back to mid. They're going to try and stay ahead on this double stoke strategy. It's going to be this is where it's going to be interesting to see where the who decides to path a little more aggressively. And Diablo's doing that, trying to get the stun, but unable to do so. Who's going to be able to path a little more aggressively and get a fight? But it looks like F and the Pancakes are going to go start their early camp, which is going to get them that XP. Camps are the sooner you can clear these camps on this map, the better, because these camps spawn really fast and able, are able to provide that XP boost in addition to the map pressure. Core Bouncers aren't going to go get their camp. They're going to go get that Soak Bottom that D.Va was able to go get. And it looks like the F and the Pancakes are just having a little bit better map control to start. They're going to have that pressure mid lane with that camp coming in. Core Bouncers now going to try and answer their, that map with theirs. They will be able to get the, oh, Captain John Jay getting caught out in the mid lane going down. That's going to just provide provide even more pressure for on the side of FF and the Pancakes. Uh, they're going to get some some damage onto this wall here, uh, possibly even get one of these towers while the side of the core bouncers are still trying to finish up their camp. Diablo, not the fastest. Vala do, being able to do as much damage as he can, but this siege camp on the side of F and the Pancakes able to get down, it looks like a tower and the front wall. One tower will remain. Now FF and the Pancakes just back off a little bit, able to wait for this wave to be cleared, the lane get pushed back in their favor, and they should clear up the uh, side of the core bouncers' siege camp. Diva just getting some bully pressure down bottom. Nemesis jumps in, but Jaeger's just gonna walk on out of there with Diva. Try to get the engage from Cap Credit Clown, but Jaeger able to just jet propulsion away. Not really worried too much. Doesn't have his his ability up yet, and he should be able to get over this wall no problem. Uh, but he will be stuck in baby diva form for a little while. Meanwhile, FF and the Pancakes just going to go back. They're a little low on mana, so they're going to get some mana, get ready for this objective. Vala is sitting about a quarter mana, so Vala may need to go get uh, a tap on one of these fountains or go back for the uh, back before this objective fight, but unable to do so. So Vala is going to be low on this on this mana when this first objective comes up, which it just did. Over in the mid lane, looks like Stampy's just going to get some of the soak. Captain John is going to get some push on that Sylvanas. Vala does end up going back, getting that mana reset. So neither team really looking to push the others uh, on, onto the objective, but this camp is coming back up on the FF and the Pancakes, and they are already ready for it, trying to clear this out as fast as they can. Again, trying to keep that map pressure. Uh, the core bouncers have their camp up as well, but they're electing to go mid, get some more pressure into the mid lane. Uh, Sylvanas is going to go over and start the camp up. She should get some help here in a little bit and able to meet this. A little bit better timing by the side of the core bouncers, but with this uh, pushing Merc camp going, it'd be interesting to see if they decide to go down for the objective on the side of FF and the Pancakes or if they're going to push mid. And they are going to go start up the objective. They should be able to get a little bit of the objective um, counted down. Stampy does finish off the... And the core bouncers, Diva does throw her mech in, just a zoning mech, not able to get a whole lot of damage, but the fight goes in. Credit Clown getting low, able to pull the Gazlo, doesn't have the follow up stun. Gazlo able to get to some zoning pressure down. Diva going back into her mech, but she's going to pop out very low, and Diva may go down here. A little bit of dangerous positioning on side of the Diva, but it's not over. Gazlo's getting fairly low, going back, just trying to appeal for himself. Able to get back and out. Just a little bit of bad positioning on the side of the D.Va, jumping in a little too aggressively and without having uh, another mech to follow up, she wasn't able to get out um, when she came out of Baby Diva, into Baby Diva form. And the core bouncers are able to respond by getting some of their pressure um, on the side of the objective. Main thing for FF and the Pancakes, they can give this up. Uh, they have pretty good wave clear on their side. They don't necessarily need to go contest it. Um, they're looking for their level 10s. So early game, they do decide going for the fight. Diva goes in. Diva's getting low. The side Lucio's getting it, but Zeratul goes in, comes out. Nemesis is fairly low, gets pulled away by the Anduin. Credit Clown going away. Diva going in. FF and the Pancakes are still looking for this fight. Zeratul getting in on the Vala. Zeratul may be able to finish her up if she takes one. Nice save by the Anduin. 7 HP on the side of Vala. It's like the story of the series. The Core Bouncer is just barely getting away with any health. Uh, but with the XP being even, uh, the 
F of the Pegasus, they just need to clear up their lanes, not allow any major pushing to go on. They may lose uh, one health fountain on one side lane, but as long as they're able to keep the other two healthy, they want their level 10s because that level 10 is when this comp really comes online on the side of FF and the Pancakes. They get their Wombo combo that they're looking for. They will end up losing the entire bot fort uh, for... And they are all responding top lane. So if core bouncers continue to push bottom, they're going to get a lot more pressure with this bottom since all five members of FF the Pancakes. Xeratul is going to get the kill on Captain John J, but there is no, uh, they are not able to, you know, they were able to clear the camp, but Cyril on the bottom side of the core bouncers is able to get the wall. If they could get this health fountain, I don't think they're going to go. I think they're going to just be comfortable with that. Uh, but if they were able to get the health fountain, that would have been a massive push for the core bouncers, able to get the wall and the health fountain for the keep. Diva's up, trying to get some split push. Trying Jaeger's trying to get that soak for level 10. It's about a three a quarter level lead on the side of the core bouncers. Um, but the level 10 is where we are going to see the FF and the Pancakes comp come online. As long as they can group up as five and start responding and being the aggressors, they should still be in a fairly good position, only being a quarter level behind. There is going to be some map pressure bottom since they did end up losing that fort, and it does need to be responded to because that keep did lose its wall. They have an exposed keep down here, so any pressure that goes bottom, they need to be able to address quickly or that keep's just going to continue to take extra punishment. Core Monsters looking like they're just going to pressure pressure up midside. Looks like they're going to try and see... Uh, attack with their siege camp, but this is level 10, and if he's able to two-man void prism goes down, Stampy getting low, but Gaslo is able to drop the bomb. They're able to get the wombo combo for the Orphe, the damage coming out. They're one able to get the follow. That's a big kill on the side of F and the Pancakes. Lucio keeping them alive. They're able to see if they're able to. Diva gets the zoning alt from behind. This might be huge on the side of F and the Pancakes. Captain Garbo is just a little out of position. He's getting flanked on all sides. Orphe is going in. Ural trying to jump out, do anything, and it pulls Ural away, but now Diablo is stuck in the middle team. Nice knockback from the Ural on all four members, able to keep everyone alive. The downside to that was they didn't have Zeratul that whole fight because he got so low with the engage, but they were still able to get the level 10 Wombo that they needed in order to get the kill, get the experience back in there a little bit into their favor. At least they are able to close that gap that they were, you know, even it up. Uh, on side of both teams. And that's pretty much what we're going to see FF and the Pancakes try to do the rest of this game is just play around their ultimate cooldowns. Gazlo's a little overextended up here. He's getting rotated on. You're all jumping in. This might be a free kill on the side of the core bouncers. And this is not what the FF and the Pancakes need here. Getting uh, the solo kills that and these picks that uh, the side of the core bouncers are able to get, that's going to keep the experience lead in their favor Zeratul able to get some split pressure down here. He may end up getting this health, but we've got the objective spawning in six seconds. If he doesn't back, get healthy. Vala getting in on the Lucio, but Lucio is able to just ski away a little bit. But they could get this health fountain just completely uncontested. FF the Pancakes decide to go for their camp, leaving nobody to defend this. And the core bouncers are able to get that health fountain and start doing some keep or fort damage as well. If it's not being addressed, the Zer tool is coming up to kind of poke him off, but that's about half the fort. This could be the engage they're looking for. It lands a two-man Void Prism. If they can get here in time, Orpheus starting her ult, but they don't have the Gazzle to drop the Grab Bomb yet. Still, Anduin getting fairly low. Anduin in the back. The Grab Bomb does able to pull in the Ural. It looks like Nemesis is just getting away. Oh, he gets away with 50 HP. Captain Garbo coming in clutch twice on the Vala. Able to pull her away with just a little bit of health left. Little bit of a messy engage. It was I saw what Stampy was trying to do, and it was a good pick. He had two squishies on the side of uh, Core Bouncers out, and he was able to lock him down with that Void Prism. So it was a good pick. He just didn't have the Gazlo there, which is one of the core pieces that they need on the side of FM Mechanics. We got an engage here, a four-man stun. The Lucio getting fairly low, but should get away safely. Diva Bomb was able to zone everybody kind of off the Lucio, and now they're looking like they're going to turn it back around onto the side of the core bouncers. Diva getting low. She does not have her bomb this time, so she's getting fairly low. She's going to pop out at fairly low HP. She may go down. Lucio's getting low on the side, but able to boop away. And a Lucio able to get away with very little health. Diva does go down, but Credit Clown may have engaged just a little too heavily. Ooh, big grab bomb on the side of Gazzle, getting the Vala and the Diablo. Big Big plays by X. I'm just going to call him X because I don't know how to say that name. But nice knockback by Dan Solo. Able to get away 
nope. Not able to quite enough get away. Orphea able to finish off that burst, and Zeratul able to be able to provide the follow-up damage to get the kill onto your Rel. And FF and the Pancakes starting to finally be able to get some kills instead of everybody getting away with single-digit HP, and now they're able to put some pressure on the map. It was nice engaged by the uh, the side of FF and the Pancakes, and the grab bomb by Gazlo was pretty massive in order to cement lock down the Diablo and Vala and get some kills. This may have been the turnaround the FF and the Pancake needs to really start putting the map into their favor. They should get most of this down. If Core Bouncers come in and engage, they may be able to stop, but they don't have Ural here, so it is a 5v4. Ultimates are almost all back up line. Apoc is dropped by Diablo. Two man dropped into the back on the heel. Grab Bomb coming down. Orphan not able to follow up with the damage quite. She was zoned off by the Credit Clown, but the Orphan now able to drop it. Captain Garbo going down. Credit Clown getting fairly low. Orphan putting damage down. And the Sylvanas going down by Jaeger. That's a three kills to one on the side of... If they're not done yet. Stampy going in, getting some low, but he jumps out back with the Zeratul. Three kills to one on the side of FF and the Pancakes, and they are able to finish off the objective, so this could be a very big push on the side of FF and the Pancakes. The lanes are pushed against them, except for bot lane. They, this bot lane is definitely going to go down. They may not even go... They might start pushing out mid lane and then rotate bot lane to follow up. Um... But their FF of the Pancakes getting now a half level lead. They're able to just these once their level ten came online, they've been decisively winning these fights, which is what they were kind of waiting for in that early game. Their early game wasn't the strongest, but as long as they didn't fall too far behind, they could execute the comp well in order to get some kills and snowball their game. I don't think they're going to be able to get much pressure with this mid. Core Bouncers are able to provide it, but they were able to get the fort bottom, and they may just continue the pressure here while the top objective um, continues to push. Looks like right now it's just going to be a little bit of a dance. The FF and the Pancakes are going to wait for Core Bouncers to go address the side lanes pushing while they want to get a little bit more pressure. They do have Ultimate almost back up on their side. Zero Tool's got 10 more seconds on for his Void Prism, and then that might be when they're going to go look for, the, for another team fight. This top objective is still getting some some value, but it's getting fairly low before it's able to get to where it needs to be. Zeratul looking for that engage. He gets a two-man onto the Vala and to the Diablo. Gazlo drops the bomb. Apox in response. They aren't able to get the Orphea follow-up again, but the Diva is able to get in, get a nice zoning ult. She's going to get the damage down, but Diva does get killed by Diablo. She was able to get flipped and stunned before she was able to get back in, before her mech even exploded really so she couldn't get back into her mech maybe a little bit aggressive on the side of the diva i understood the play she wanted to get the zoning out maybe get some big damage to separate them but she was able to get bursted down pretty quickly they do have you know with the vala and the sylvanas if she's if diablo is able to land his combo on baby diva they could kill it before the mech so both sides go get their siege camps. It looks like core bouncers may start to play for boss here. Since they do have the 5v4, it doesn't look like F and the Pancakes are able to respond. F and the Pancakes are rotating down, so it looks like they are suspicious of a potential boss play. But it is 5v4. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do without their ultimates online. I don't think they're really going to be able to contest this. They don't, have, they don't have much in form of engage onto this fight just being down two men, but they decide to walk on anyway. It looks like Credit Clown dives in. The grab bomb lands on four, but they don't have the Orphea ult or the Diva bomb to follow up. They're running away by the skin of their teeth. X is able to get away just with a little bit of life. Jaeger gets flipped, but he should be able to just jet propulsion away. They're able to get out, so ultimately... It was a scary situation for F and the Pancakes. They don't lose anybody. They did burn some ultimates. Lucio still has his. But this boss may provide enough pressure that Core Bouncers are able to get this bottom keep. Diva gets knocked back into the team. Gets stunned by the boss. She's going to maybe get out of her mech in the middle of the enemy team. Can Diva get away this time? She does. It's going to hurt. They're not going to have as much zoning pressure for the boss. This boss should be able to get this keep all the way down. If the core bouncers just stay aggressive on their pathing, they're backing off a little bit, but it looks like the boss is just going to be able to end up end this keep, and the core bouncers are willing to go back and start the objective while the boss is getting the keep. So now we've got keep pressure 
on the bot lane on the side of the core bouncers. FF and the pancakes, they do have their combo up. They don't necessarily need the Lucio ult for their combo. It's nice to have in case the combo doesn't work and they get engaged on. So, but it looks like FF and the pancakes are going to look to pick this fight and try to get a good engage. Xeratul gets jumped in. He only gets one person with the void. Grab bomb goes down. It is on Anduin, but they just aren't able to follow up with the Orphea ult. Again, Courtney's getting zoned. This front line of core bouncers is huge and it's allowing. The, yeah, one kill going down. Zeratul may go down here, but the front line of Core Bouncer is able to zone off that Orphea and keep the damage, the burst damage from going down on that grab bomb, which is needed by the side of FF and the Pancakes. It's, it's just, it's tough. These these two big frontliners in Urel and Diablo are able to keep that Orphea away long enough that they're just, the side of FF and Pancakes aren't able to necessarily get the damage down that they need on this on this Wombo combo that they have. We've seen it work. It's worked in several different instances earlier, but in these last few fights, Orphea's just been getting zoned off the fight and not able to get what she needs. Now the core bouncers, this is this is looking pretty grim for sides after the pancakes. They may try to take this fight and just force something before the objective gets here, but it looks like they're gonna back off, just do a little bit of a skirmish in front. Diva getting knocked out of her mech. She does not have her ult, so she won't have that. You're all jumping in, get some good damage down to the diva. That's a big kill on side. Oh, Diablo goes in, gets a stun onto the Zera tool, but nobody was there to follow up. Real knocks away. The team Courtney getting fairly low. Diablo is just man moding this entire fight right now but the side of the rest of his team isn't quite able to get there and do the rest of the damage this this 5v4 fight under the boss the boss has lost two armors so the boss is fairly weak they may end up being able to just burn through this side of the core bouncers with the second one coming in this might be just a zoning apoc so that they can burn the rest this should go over to the core bouncers. I don't see the FF and the Pancakes being able to respond and just get the damage down. And this should be GG on the side of the core bouncers. Game two going over to them. A pretty clean 2-0. A little bit of a hiccup in the mid game with the uh, level 10 ultimates coming online for FF and the Pancakes. But they were able to respond, figure out, regroup, and see how they wanted to uh, address the the damage that was coming out. And it looked like Diablo and Yurel just had a chat and said, hey, we just need to zone off this Orphea. And if we can get this Orphea away from the fight, we can do things. I mean, Orphea still put out 78. Courtney putting out huge damage on that Orphea, but all that damage was around the combo uh, in the later game instead of with the combo. So she wasn't able to get the kills that they necessarily needed to get the damage done on the side of FF and the Pancakes. Uh, Vala ended up, it ended up working. He got killed a couple times by the Zeratul, but, um, the Zeratul wasn't able to necessarily bully them quite enough. Um, it, it, it just seemed like the damage on the later game was just a little bit lighter on the side of FF and the Pancakes, whereas earlier in the mid game, that was level 10 to level 15, they were able to show their damage when they could land that entire comp. Uh, didn't seem like D.Va was able to land her mech timings well enough with the, the Void Prism um, and maybe just getting a little too aggressive. Uh, but when it was on, it was on. Uh, credit to the core bouncers. They were able to execute their comp yet again very cleanly. Uh, they just had to kind of figure out what they were going to do with that mid-game. Let me see if I can get... Um, I'm going to message Captain Garbo, the captain of the core bouncers, and see if I can get an interview with him real quick. I'm going to go jump in on Discord, go find a lobby that's open, waiting to hear back to see if they can they can do... An interview, yeah. The the Diablo Apox, they they became pretty effective later on, um, being able to provide some of that zoning pressure on that Orphea as well with the Apox. Um, Urel being just that beefy frontliner, being able to jump in right on top of the Orphea and make her have to go backwards instead of forwards. When Orphea loves to go forward, she want to uh, be able to jump in and get as much damage as she can. Oh, just got a response. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can get him to come in. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Hey, doing all right. 
Congratulations on the win. Another 2 a victory for the core bouncers. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we start off with the, uh, a pretty easy question. What was your guys' uh, strategy coming into the series today? Um, so coming into the series, we were caught a little off. Uh, we haven't played Dragonshire in a while. In a while, it's not super commonly picked, but um, they 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 definitely were uh, were watching us play our last games because they banned out our two favorite maps. But yeah, I we'll, noticed that right away. Hanamura and uh, went, know, Voss know, Gaia we, went bye bye. Yeah, we knew, we knew it was going to happen, but uh, yeah, it was good because uh, I am kind of or I used to be like a Brightwing main and uh, Brightwing's awesome on that map. And so it was fun getting to bring her out. Um, and so we have like a team comp that is uh, centered around her and um, being able to, you know, kind of do the, the flip and poly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, combo, and uh, we kind of built the mobility aspect of it, and um, that was kind of our strategy for Dragonshire. Yeah, I, I was going to mention or ask, I noticed you guys went back to the Lunara and the Li Ming, so you had a little bit of a more mobile comp. Was that in just response to how well it worked with you on the Volskaya game in your last series, or were you looking more at what they were building and deciding, you know, if we, if we stay mobile, we can just not die, essentially? Yeah, I think that was that's what we were looking at. I mean, we we've all played those uh, you know heroes before, so we knew that we played them pretty well. But I think when we were drafting, we were looking at what they were going and realizing that uh, the mobility would help us get away from the Kira and the Junkrat and uh, the you know just all their uh, annoying stuff that they had. We we figured the uh, the extra mobility would have helped us, and especially with the Brightwing. Uh, you know, she gives the extra mobility, and then I built the mobility, and then uh, just having her inherently be able to teleport halfway across the map. So, yeah. Um, looking at game two, it seemed like you guys were doing well, and then you guys started to fumble. Tell me a little bit about what was going on uh, in that mid game for game two, and uh, how you guys were able to kind of regroup, reconnect, and then you know, start executing the fights a little bit cleaner uh, and, and end up taking that game too. For a little bit there, it looked like FF and the Pancakes were starting to put you guys on your heels. <laughs> oh, they definitely did. I mean, that, yeah, that mid game was definitely, uh, we were we were freaking out a little bit. I mean, I, I think when we saw the draft um, uh, coming into it, we kind of realized, okay, they're going to try and just do a stun lock ult combo uh, build. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that was kind of our idea going into it with the Anduin and the, the APOC being able to kind of disengage. But, you know, once we got into it, um, I think, I believe, uh, Stampy, who is the Zeratul, uh, plays a really yeah. good Zeratul. And so, you know, th that first uh, combo when we got the uh, Time Stop, Gravo Bomb, uh, you know, Internal Feast, it was like, okay, hold up. You know, we can't have that happen again. So, um you know, we had it happen maybe two more times, and then we kind of had a little uh, brief team meeting that said, uh, okay, hey, let's space out. Let's give them space. We need to not get caught by the ult combo and mm -hmm. try and bait out and stagger the ults, because at that point, we kind of they kind of began staggering the ult combo, which was kind of like their forte for that build. Yeah, absolutely. So once they started staggering that combo out... Um, we were able to take advantage of that and kind of pick them off one by one, especially with the Diablo light bomb and, uh, you know, following it with the APOC. So that, uh, that's a very scary old combo. I'll be honest. Yeah. It looked like, it looked like halfway through you guys were able to say, Hey, there, that Orphea is pretty much the main damage that's coming down. Uh, if the diva isn't, blowing up with yeah. her her mech so zoning that orphea may be a priority i noticed the the bomb going onto the diablo and him and you're able to zone that orphea away which seemed mm -hmm. to whoever was caught was able to survive a little longer it seemed to exactly. be the theme of the night uh, i was i made several comments you, several members were getting away with like single digit hell i think you yeah. came in with a clutch heel on uh, nemesis at one point yeah, in that top I, lane I, I screamed at him uh, there i was like <laughs> you, you do not do that again because Oh, he had, uh, I mean, he's notorious for being constantly low health and out of mana, making crazy plays, but uh, we, I had a few uh, clutch heals on him. <laughs> I was like, I, th I think okay, he got to seven. To I think it was yeah. seven HP, and I was like, oh my gosh, he was, Absolutely. I thought he was dead, and he just got enough of that heal. Um, mm -hmm. 
So it you guys were picking. Oh, I'm sure tonight you were you were having several heart attacks with how low everybody was getting, but they were staying alive, and that was I think what really helped with that, especially game one. There was a lot of instances, but uh, so game two, I ha- I don't think I've seen you guys play on Alteric Pass. Was that a map that you were planning to come into the series tonight with, or was it picked because you did some research or like maybe that's one of F and the Pancakes' weaker maps, and so you guys wanted to take it? Or is it just um, we really like Alteric Pass? Nobody's really seen us play on Alteric Pass. Yeah, I think uh, you know, Dragonshire was kind of a shot in the dark. We we hadn't really played that one in a while. Um, they banned out our usual ones, but I think we were kind of uh, you know we've we've played well on um, on Alteric Pass before, and I think that we ended up deciding it because it is a good uh, team fight map, and then there is kind of that. Um, that area that's kind of between the the tower and the thing where you've got a lot of corridors, you got the mud pit, and it's very good to be able to zone people out. And so we we wanted to bring the URL out, mm. and we knew that having a URL Diablo, APOC, Light Bomb would be able to kind of zone them super well. And we just in general we we favor the uh, team fight heavy maps over the maps that were uh, we're splitting fights you know kind of like braxis and right um you know dragonshire i mean obviously it 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 still worked out but in general we we love the big team fight maps and i think they're just they're just more fun to play <laughs> i would agree with you there they are definitely yeah. they are definitely fun maps um tell me who do you think tonight was your guys's mvp for the series oh that's that's always hard um i would probably have to give two MVPs tonight. Uh, okay. First game, I would give it to myself. <laughs> humble, humble nod and, there. I, I would. And, I would say with the amount of saves, that's a very, very good humble nod. But no, us as a team agreed on it. Okay. Um, and I just think it's funny for me to say, "Give it to myself." But um, <laughs> no, give it to yourself. You uh, second it. second game, I'd probably give it to Diablo, just because he was just tearing tearing shit up, and uh, and so that would be credit clone. Yeah, I know I gave it to him last game, but uh, yeah, he doesn't. He's actually pretty new to Diablo, so you wouldn't be able to tell. But uh, uh, he plays a mean Diablo, and so I think uh, just you know being able to zone, and of course uh, Dan's URL is just brutal. No, a lot of people just don't really know what to do with a URL, which which is a fun way to play. Her. Mm-hmm. Um, he was but, getting some pretty good knockbacks, disengages yeah. for sure. I think he got a four man knockback at one point that saved. Yep. I don't remember whose life it was. It was down by the lower objective, but four man, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was some, some great zoning going on. And I think that's, that's why we picked that altar rack is because we knew we'd be able to zone out. It's, and it's a very like tight corridor and it's pretty good for, uh, for a Diablo and Urel to be able to just kind of whack people around and flip and, you know, the only thing that was kind of splitting us up was the diva, mm. and I, you know, we weren't really expecting the diva pick, but um, you know, it still worked out. We were, I was able to use my D to save some people a few times, and um, you know, I, I actually kind of found that it didn't really synergize well with like their big old combo thing they were doing, because um, it, it in turn kind of made us all play pretty split apart, and they weren't really catching any like five man stun uh, combo, so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, great series again by you guys. Another decisive 2-0. I think that right now that puts you guys up in the number one seed in Division E. Oh, nice. Uh, with, I th- I'm pretty sure. Because you guys came in at number two. I think it really just depends on Illa Dancing Queens and how they end up uh, yeah, they're, whatever they're doing next their next knows. match. But uh, congratulations. Any shout-outs you'd like to give before we part? Um, just to the uh, FF and the Pancakes. They played a great game. They has sweating that second game and uh it was really fun yeah awesome nod to the other team i like it all right uh captain garbo thank you for the interview good luck to your guys' team the rest of the way i'm sure we'll be seeing you guys in the playoffs and excited to see how the season works out for the rest of you guys yeah thanks for casting us again oh absolutely my pleasure yeah have a good one you too take care
All right. So that was Captain Garbo from the side of the core bouncers. Captain giving himself the humble nod. Looks like the rest of his team was pretty supportive of him in chat as well, saying we voted he was it. And he was coming away. He had some very clutch and win pulls in that second game. Um, and, I mean, when your teammates are ticking down with bleeds at 7 HP and you come in and save them, they're kind of sitting there, you know, giving you all the praise for, for doing that. He definitely had a little bit of a terrifying game with the amount of engage and wombo comboing going on, but core bouncers able to collect themselves and come back and win game two. Um, not as decisively as game one. They were actually behind in kills at the end, but they were able to, to pull it out, pull out the W with the Diablo Ural front line, just being too, too big for the damage to get by uh, and kind of, knocking the FF and the Pancakes off of their ultimate combos that they were trying to land. Um, like, like Garbo mentioned, they were starting to get a little bit staggered because they just couldn't quite cement it down. But yeah, uh, exciting series. Um, I don't believe I have anything signed up for. Mondays usually are my best nights for, for casting, so that's why I've been doing them on Monday nights. But I don't think I have anything else signed up. I may get one more in this week, maybe maybe one this weekend depending on what's available but uh that's all i have for tonight i don't think i've missed anything else in chat let me double check real quick nope so i'm gonna sign off here have a good night everyone and uh enjoy enjoy the nexus